When it comes to taking your future to the next level, it's on at JTech. JTech, driving futures forward. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Robert Vachnik. I'm an automotive and diesel technology instructor here at Jones Technical Institute in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Today we're going to go over doing a voltage drop test on a starter circuit. First, you'll need to have a few things in order to do that. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you're working safely. Use your safety glasses. A battery exploding can be very violent and uh, it can really do some bodily damage, even cause death. You need to make sure that you have a digital multimeter. You need a digital multimeter that is going to allow you to do DC volts because we're working with an automobile or a truck. This vehicle that we're going to be using today is a 12 volt system, so you want to make sure that your multimeter will do 12 volt. You want to make sure that it enables you to read it accurately and actually hold a number on the screen if you need to use that number for uh, future reference. Another handy thing is to have a set of retractable test leads. You want to make sure that you're able to get to the item that's being tested while you're able to work safely away from any moving parts these will enable you to do that as well. So a nice set of retractable test leads. These are 15 foot, plenty long. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here first is I'm gonna illustrate on the board the areas of testing. First thing you need to do is set your meter at DC volts. This particular one, luckily, one turn around. As you can see, the numbers are going to move around a little bit. They don't want to burn an image into the screen, so the numbers are jumping around quite a bit. That's normal, so when you see that, don't panic. Set your stand, put your meter where it is that you'll be able to see what it is that you're looking at. We can see everything just fine here. Remember that a voltage drop test always has to be done under a load. So if you're testing a lighting circuit, you're going to turn the lights on, obviously. If the lights are not on, there's no power flow, okay? Same thing on the starting system. You're going to take, excite the starter solenoid by engaging the starter switch. That is going to give you full battery power jumped over within the solenoid. It's going to power off your starter. And it, of course, your starter is going to be bolted onto the engine or have a ground wire running over to it. First thing we're going to do, I always start with the ground because it seems to be the ground issues are the most common. So what I would do is put my positive lead on the battery post. I would put my negative lead on the engine block. I would go to start the vehicle. I would then note the voltage drop on the meter. If the meter read 9.2, that would be 9.2 volts. That would be considered excessive. The vehicle would not start. If the reading were the decimal followed by two zeros and any number, then that reading would be considered okay. We would not have a problem on the ground side of the circuit. But we would then move over to the positive side now, if any of you guys have ever noticed along the battery cables, any green fuzzy looking film or, or you know, build up of any sort, that is called corrosion. That corrosion always builds some sort of resistance within a circuit. High resistance is not good. You do not want a lot of resistance. You want to make sure you have continuous power flow all the way across the board. And here on the positive side, we would do the same thing. We would take, put our positive or negative on the battery post. Now just remember that if you have the wires crossed, you are only going to get a negative reading, but the numbers will still read true to your voltage drop. We would put our leads in the same as the negative side. If we had a high number like 12.3 or 9.5, then that would be considered bad. 
Anything higher than 500 millivolts is not going to be good. The new industry standard for voltage drop is 300 millivolts. So anything higher than 300 would be considered excessive. In the starting circuit, I've always used the number 500 millivolts as being a number that is acceptable. Anything higher than 500 millivolts would be considered excessive in the starting circuit. Okay guys, so here's what we've done. We've taken and set the leads up to the multimeter. We've got one lead going down to our starter and we're going to test it at the battery. So we're just going to do a, a static test, which means we're just testing it while it's not under a load. We'll hook this terminal up to our test lead, the other test lead going down to the starter. And then as you can see, we do not have much of a voltage drop at all. Okay, so the next thing I would do is to go inside the vehicle and we're going to go ahead and try and start the vehicle. See what we have. Nothing, we have no lights coming on in the dash. The dome light is not illuminated. There's one step that we left out. What did we not do? We did not test the voltage at the battery to begin with. So the next step we're going to do is, let's go ahead and test our source voltage. So we'll go ahead and get this lead out from underneath the, on the starter. We'll get our new end to put on it. We'll go ahead and disconnect these long test leads. Remember that the black is always your common or your ground. Get this one out of our way. We need to know what our voltage is on the battery. We have 12.9 volts. Now anything 12.6 to 13.2 is fully charged. So the next thing we'll do, since we know that we did not have a voltage drop under the start or a voltage drop with it static, nothing is on but we have a fully charged battery, we know that we have a bad connection issue somewhere and we're going to continue with our voltage drop test on the negative side. So the first thing I would do is go from a ground source. Anything metal on the engine will work just fine as long as it's a good clean surface. Take your next lead, put it on the battery, and then we want to see what our voltage reading is. Now remember guys, we're checking just the ground side. We shouldn't have any reading hardly at all. Anything less than a half volt is acceptable. We have 12.88 volts. What that tells me is that we have over 12 volts being lost on the ground side. I would continue to work with the battery connection and work my way with the other lead working its way back towards the battery. Now when our voltage drop changes, we know that that is where the problem area is. So if you move to another surface, you want to check and see what the reading is. We're 12.86. We have a little better connection at the valve cover than the air conditioning compressor. That's probably because of how many components are bolted in between the two or what is in between the components to the engine block. Move our way up. We'll go ahead and test it next. Here at the battery, we're still sitting at 12.8. We'll work our way from the battery post to another portion of this terminal. And we have zero voltage drop. So we know that our problem lies within this connection on the ground. Now if you look and see this, this white film around this battery terminal, Remember what I said earlier about the corrosion, white and green, 
we're talking about a corrosion, uh, corrosion issue and we need to go ahead and take this apart, clean it, and put it back together and retest it. All right guys, we're back and as you can see we have taken the negative battery cable and connections apart, cleaned them up, bolted them back together. Now we're going to check and see what the voltage drop reading is there again. Now remember, we have 12.63 volts in this battery at this moment. We want less than a half a volt drop on our terminal. Now remember, most modern vehicles want less than 300 millivolts. I'm using 500 millivolts as a number for the starting circuit. On our ground, before, if you remember, we had 12.8, 12.6 voltage drop. We have 100 millivolts drop on this ground circuit now. I don't know, that looks pretty good. What do you say we try and give it a, give it a start? Well, the lights are on in the dash and the cab lights came on. I'd say that's a good sign, wouldn't you? Go ahead and reach inside here. Hey, what do you know? She started right up. That should make our customer happy. Remember, a happy customer will always come back to you for further repairs. All right, guys, my name's Robert Vachnik. I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I hope that you learned something. And remember, visit us again at our YouTube channel. We will be posting more videos for your education and entertainment. Thank you very much. Have a good day. When it comes to taking your future to the next level, it's on at JTEC. We're revved up and ready to go to get you trained for a new career. JTEC was built with one thing in mind, your success. You'll find professional grade everything, equipment, tools, and instructors, because we know what it takes to get you set up for a career in automotive technology, diesel technology, or commercial truck driving. They've allowed us to do things that I've never been able to do before, be able to design the shops the way we know they need to be done to meet the industry needs. One of the things that I wanted to do was try to make it as close to a real shop as I could so that when the technicians leave here, when they do get into the shop as a profession, it's familiar to them. Uh, I've been doing this for over 30 years and uh, I've never seen a facility quite this nice. Everything is brand new in here. From the instructors to the people that run the office to everything, it's just a wonderful atmosphere when you come in here. They've done everything right from the ground up. It's on. Call JTEC or go to JTEC.org. JTEC, driving futures forward.